Hey everyone, and welcome to another deep dive with us. Today, um, we're going to be looking at something pretty interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's Tibet. It is Tibet. It's Tibet's unexpected role in global sustainability. Yeah, you don't often hear those two things together, Tibet and sustainability. No, not really. But we're going to try to bring them together today. We're going to be looking at this article. It's called... Uh, why Tibet's contributions to sustainable development goals, SDGs, make it the ideal location for Tatanka. Okay, so that's the title of the article. Published on December 1st, 2024 on tatanka.site. Tatanka.site. Okay, so first of all, what is Tatanka? So Tatanka is an organization that is using AI and human talent to advance sustainability and inclusivity. Okay, so right away we're seeing this interesting juxtaposition. We've got Tibet, we often think about, you know, monks and spirituality and mountains. Right, yeah, sort of isolated. Isolation, very traditional ancient culture. Mm -hmm. And then we've got AI, cutting edge technology. What is the connection? That's what we're going to try to figure out today. Mm. Yeah. And the article makes the case that Tibet's traditional practices combined with Tatanka's technological innovations can really advance global sustainability. Okay, let's jump into it. The article starts off by talking about Tibet's role as Asia's water tower. Yeah. I mean, we all know that the Himalayas are there. We all know there's a lot of water. but Source of the major rivers in Asia. Yeah. Huge impact on billions of people downstream. Absolutely, yeah. But what's interesting is that they've had centuries-old water conservation methods. Yeah, and um, they have a system called Kuli Irrigation, which is essentially like a network of canals okay. that channel glacial meltwater. So they're not just letting it run off. No, they're carefully channeling. Carefully channeling. And I'm guessing this is... Um, Minimizing waste, maximizing efficiency. Goes deeper than just practicality, right? This has some spiritual significance as well. It's huge. Water is considered sacred in Tibetan culture. Okay. So this reverence for water is like woven into their daily lives. That's interesting. It's not just about, you know, the practical aspects of survival. It's about respecting the water itself. It is. And um, the article also mentions an organization okay. called the Tibetan Plateau Project. What is that? So it's an NGO. Mm -hmm. And they're working with local communities to ensure clean water access. That's great. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Okay, so they're tackling the clean water issue. Mm -hmm. What about food? Because you know you've got these high altitudes. What are they growing up there? High altitude barley. Barley. Yeah. It's a staple crop in oh. Tibet. Okay. And it's known for its resilience. Okay. It can survive like extreme cold, low oxygen levels, things like that. Wow, so it's like climate resilient. It is. Food. Yeah. And they've been cultivating this barley for generations. Using traditional methods. I'm guessing that those traditional methods help maintain sustainability. Absolutely, yeah. And food security. Exactly. And the article also points out that preserving indigenous crops like this high-altitude barley yes. is super important for biodiversity. Yeah. So it's not just about feeding the people in Tibet. It's about having this diverse... Global food system. Yeah, a global food system that can adapt to future challenges like climate change. Yeah, and they are setting a good example. They are setting a good example have... for sustainable agriculture. Yes. Okay, so we've got clean water. We've got sustainable food. What else is going on in Tibet? Renewable energy. Renewable energy. Big on solar and wind power. Really? Yeah, aligning with SDG 7, affordable and clean energy. That's great. I mean, they have the sun, they have the wind. It makes sense. I do. Yeah, it does. And I, uh, I imagine those vast solar farms. Yeah, and wind turbines. Wind turbines against the backdrop of those mountains. It's pretty striking. It is. When you think about it. Yeah. I mean, usually you think about like prayer flags, you know, very traditional imagery. And now we're picturing these big wind turbines. Yes, yeah. and solar farms. Solar farm. It's pretty cool. That is cool. And they're not just doing large scale projects. They're also doing small scale solutions for remote villages. Like what? Things like solar cookers and micro hydro plants. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so it's a mix of... Yeah, big and small. Yeah. Ancient wisdom and modern technology. I like it. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about education. Okay. The article mentions that Tibetan schools are blending traditional knowledge with modern curricula. That's right. So it's not just about, you know, textbooks and technology. It's about teaching the next generation about their heritage. Yeah, passing down that knowledge. And connecting it to the world around them. It's very holistic. It is. And the article also mentions that NGOs are playing a vital role. Huge role. 
in bringing educational access to these remote areas. Yeah, because a lot of these communities yes. are very difficult to reach. Yeah, and everyone deserves Absolute education. Job. Yeah. So this is this is a great thing, and it sounds like they're really taking these SDGs. They are. Yes. Yeah. Heart. They are really integrating them. Yeah. Into the education system. Okay, so we talk a little bit about Tatanka at the beginning, but yeah. let's go back to them because they're kind of the bridge, right? They are. Yeah, they're connecting Tibet's efforts with the rest of the world. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about how they're using AI Sure. to actually make a difference. They use AI in a lot of different ways. For yeah. example, they use it to mm -hmm. monitor deforestation. Oh, that's interesting. How do they do that? Real-time analysis of satellite imagery. So they're basically like constantly... It's like a watchdog in the sky. Yeah, keeping an eye on things. Exactly. That's really cool. And they're not just using it for... Environmental protection. Yeah. They're also using it to connect and empower underrepresented talent. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Because, you know, the SDGs are all about inclusivity. They are, yeah. And making sure everyone has a chance to contribute. Yeah. And Tataka believes that a more sustainable future mm -hmm. needs yeah. everyone's involvement. Okay. So we've got this AI analyzing satellite imagery, connecting talented individuals. Mm. And then there's this story in the article about a, a young woman from Tibet. Oh, yeah. Kelsang. Yeah. Tell me about Kelsing because she kind of embodies this. Yeah, she's a great example. This of whole thing we're talking about. That blend of tradition and innovation. Yeah. So tell me about her. So Kelsing grew up in a remote Tibetan village. Okay. Where access to education was limited. Okay. And she saw her own father, who was a herdsman, struggle because he couldn't read. So she saw the impact of not having access to education. She did. Yeah. And even at a young age, she knew how important education was. Okay. So she was determined to make a difference. And she did something about it. She did. So how did she bridge that gap? Well, she earned a scholarship to study in Lhasa. Okay. And when she came back to her village, she had this vision. Okay. What was her vision? She wanted to create a learning experience that respected her heritage. Okay. But also gave them the skills to thrive. So she wanted to blend she did, yeah. the traditional with the modern. What did and, she call it? Yeah. The Skylamp Initiative. The Skylamp Initiative. Okay. I like it already. What did she do? So she realized that just bringing in textbooks wouldn't be enough. Right. So she decided to equip students with solar-powered tablets. Solar-powered tablets in a remote Tibetan village. I know, right? It's pretty amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. I'm guessing it wasn't easy to convince everyone that this was a good idea. No. Some of the village elders were wary of this technology. Yeah, I mean, they probably thought it would erode yeah. their culture. They did. So how did she convince them? She found a way to integrate tradition <laughs> into this tech-focused approach. How did she do that? So she organized storytelling nights. Storytelling nights? Where the elders would share traditional tales. Okay. And the students would record these stories on their tablets. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it was brilliant. So she's preserving yeah, the stories and the technology. Using right? the technology. And I bet those storytelling nights became like real community events. They did, yeah. It okay. really brought everyone together. That's wonderful. Yeah. And this is where Tatanka comes in, right? This is where they come in. They help take it to the next level. They saw the potential of Kelsang's vision okay, and decided to help her integrate their AI capabilities. And what did the AI do? Well, their AI could analyze each student's learning pattern okay, and then recommend personalized lessons. Wow. So they're personalizing the learning experience. They are, yeah. For each student. Yeah, making sure that everybody was getting the most out of the program. That's incredible. It is. What a great example of tradition and technology. Yeah. Working together. Working together. Yeah. It's really powerful. That's a fantastic place to stop for now. Okay. We've got so much more to talk about when we come back. And we are back. We were just talking about Kelsang and the Skylamp Initiative. Yeah. An amazing project. Incredible. Yeah. It really seems to show how Tatanka works. It does. Yeah. They're not just developing AI solutions, you know, in isolation. They really get involved in the communities. Yeah, they're very hands-on. They try to understand the specific needs and challenges. And so they really prioritize inclusivity. Yeah, and empowering those voices that are often unheard. Which aligns perfectly with yeah. the SDGs, yeah. those sustainable development goals. Absolutely. 
So the article really stresses how much Tatanka's mission is intertwined with. Yeah, intertwined with the SDGs. The SDGs. Yeah. They're not just focused on one thing. No, they tackle a range of issues. Like, for example, they're using AI to protect forests. Oh, yeah. We talked about that briefly before. We did. But they go into a lot more detail in the article. Okay, what kind of detail? Well, it's not just about, you know, spotting illegal logging. Right. It's about really understanding the factors that contribute to deforestation. The underlying causes. Yeah, the root causes. And then developing targeted solutions. So they're using the AI to analyze. Tons of data. Right. Yeah. From satellite imagery to weather patterns to economic trends, all sorts of things. So they're trying to get a really holistic picture. A big picture, yeah. Of what's going on. Exactly. And then they work with those communities. They do, to come up with sustainable solutions. Because they're very collaborative. It is, yeah. Very collaborative. Approach. I like it. So they're not just, you know, putting out fires. They're trying to prevent them. Yeah, that's much better. Much better, yeah. To prevent the problems in the first place. Exactly. It's almost like a global brain. Yeah, I like that analogy. Analyzing. Analyzing complex problems. And helping us find solutions. Yeah. And their work goes beyond just forests, right? It does, yeah. They also develop renewable energy solutions. Okay, like what? Give me an example. So one example is optimizing hydroelectric power generation. Okay. Based on real-time water flow data. Oh, wow. So they're using the AI to... Mm. To make sure that they're getting the most out of the resources. Maximize the efficiency. Yeah, maximize efficiency. Wow. It seems like both Tibet and Tatanka. They do... Share this philosophy of... Yeah, they have this deep commitment to... Harmony. Harmony. Between yeah. nature and technology. It's pretty awesome when you think about it. And it seems like it's a partnership that could really inspire others. It could. And, you know, the SDGs... <laughs> yeah. They're not just for governments to figure out. No, we all have a role to play. It requires everyone to work together. Yeah. And speaking of working together, the article mentions that Tatanka is very involved in education. Yes. Beyond their work with Kelsang. Beyond Kelsang, yes. They're using AI to make learning more accessible and engaging. Okay, that's interesting. So how are they using AI to make it more engaging? Well, they're developing AI-powered learning platforms. Okay. That can adapt to individual learning styles. So it's well, imagine a platform that assesses uh, students' strengths and weaknesses. Personalized learning. Yeah, personalized learning. Okay, and yeah. then it adjusts. Yeah, adjusts the content, the pacing, all that. That is cool. Yeah, and they're not just focused on the technical skills. What else? They're also using AI to promote cultural understanding and appreciation. That's important. It is. Yeah. You know, a sustainable future requires us to embrace diversity and learn from each other and learn from each other yeah and i remember reading that they're using music to do this oh yeah they have this really interesting program okay they believe that music is a universal language it is it can transcend borders create connections yeah it can bring people together it can so they're working with musicians and artists oh, wow. from indigenous communities around the world that's awesome to create this global tapestry of sound and shared experiences. It's like a global orchestra. It is. Where every instrument is a different culture. I love that. That's a beautiful image. It is. So it really emphasizes the power of collaboration. It does, yeah. And it brings us back to... That synergy. The synergy between yeah. Tibet and Tatanka. Between Tibet and Tatanka. We've seen how this partnership is addressing so many global challenges. It is amazing. From clean water to sustainable agriculture. Renewable energy. Renewable energy, inclusive education. It's pretty remarkable. It is remarkable. Yeah. But how do these big ideas... That's a good question. ...translate to the individual level? Yeah, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, right? Yeah. By the scale of these global challenges. Yeah, because I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I'm not an AI expert. Right. I don't live in Tibet. Right. What can I do? Right. So how do we take these big ideas and turn them into actions in our everyday lives? Yeah. Give me something practical that I can do. What well, starts with realizing that sustainability is not just a concept. Yeah. It's a way of life. Okay. It's about making conscious choices. Every single day. Every day. From the food we buy yep. to the energy we use right, right. to the way we treat our environment. So being mindful of our impact. Exactly. Yeah. Being mindful. Yeah. And being curious. Okay. Asking questions. Seeking out information. So educating ourselves. Yeah. Learn about the SDGs. Learn about what organizations like the Tonka are doing. Okay, so do your research. Yeah, do your research. Learn what's going on. And find ways to get involved in your community. 
That's a great point. You don't have to travel to Tibet to make a difference. No, you can start right where you are. Yeah. And it's about remembering that we are all interconnected. Interconnected. Yeah. Our choices, even the small ones, matter. They do. They have a ripple effect. They do. So Tibet's story is a powerful example. It is. Of how a region that we often think of as isolated yeah. can actually contribute. It can. To global solutions. And Tatanka's work shows us. It does. That technology can be a force for good. Yeah. When it's used ethically mm -hmm. and with a focus on inclusivity. I'm already thinking about what I can do differently in my own life. Yeah. Based on what we've talked about today. Yeah. It's inspiring. It is inspiring. Yeah. Now, before we wrap up, there's yeah. one more thing I wanted to touch on. Tatanka's work in preserving and celebrating indigenous cultures. Oh, yeah. That's a big part of their mission. It is. And it ties into everything we've been talking about. It does, yeah. Tatanka believes that cultural diversity is essential for a sustainable future. Because different cultures have so much knowledge to share. They do. And we can learn from each other. We can. Right. And they have this program called Echoes of the Earth. Yeah. Tell me about that. So they partner with indigenous communities mm -hmm. to record and share their stories, songs, traditional knowledge. Okay. And they use AI to translate. So that more people can access it. Exactly. It makes those stories accessible to a global audience. It's like a digital library of cultural wisdom. It is. Yeah. And that's important because sometimes those traditions... They can get lost. Get lost. Yeah. And this way they're preserved... They are. And shared and celebrated and celebrated. Yeah. And it really reminds me of what Kelsang did with the storytelling nights. It does. Yeah. She was preserving those stories using technology. Using technology. It's a great way to honor the past. It is. And build bridges to the future. It is. Yeah. It's beautiful. So as we come to the end of this deep dive. Yeah. What are some of the key takeaways? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is that sustainability is a way of life. Mm. It's not just a buzzword. No. It's about the choices we make every day. The choices we make every day. Yeah. Embracing innovation while respecting tradition. Okay. And remembering that we're all connected. We are all connected. We are. And our choices. Our choices matter. They do. Yeah. So be curious, stay engaged. Yes. Find ways to make a difference. Yeah. No matter how small. No matter how small. Yeah. It all adds up. It does. And never lose sight of the big picture. The big picture, yeah. The sustainable development goals. The SDGs. That guide us toward a better future. A better future. For everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey. Oh, it was my pleasure. Into the world of Tibetan sustainability and the amazing work that Tatanka is doing. It's been a great conversation. Wow, we've covered so much ground in this deep dive. From the Himalayas to AI, it's been quite a journey. It really has. And I think what's struck me most is how Tibet, often seen as this remote and isolated place, is actually at the forefront of global sustainability. Right. Their ancient traditions and practices, their deep connection to nature, it's all incredibly relevant to the challenges we face today. It's like they've been living sustainably for centuries without even calling it that. Mm. And now, with organizations like Tatanka helping to bridge the gap between tradition and technology, Tibet's wisdom is being shared with the world. And amplified, right. I mean, Tatanka is taking those traditional practices and scaling them up, using AI and their global network to create real impact. Exactly. Think about the water conservation methods we talked about. Tibet has been carefully managing their water resources for generations. Now imagine those principles being applied to water management projects around the world, with AI helping to optimize efficiency and ensure equitable distribution. It's like taking ancient wisdom and giving it a technological boost. And it's not just about water. We've seen how Tibet's approach to agriculture, energy, education, even cultural preservation is all rooted in this deep understanding of sustainability. And it's not about romanticizing the past or rejecting progress. It's about finding that sweet spot where tradition and innovation intersect. Like those solar panels next to the monasteries or the kids using tablets to record their elders' stories. It's a powerful image of how the old and the new can coexist and even enhance each other. Absolutely. And it's a reminder that we don't always have to start from scratch. Sometimes the solutions we're looking for are already out there, embedded in the wisdom of cultures that have lived in harmony with nature for centuries. It makes you wonder what other hidden gems are out there, just waiting to be discovered and shared. Exactly. And that's why organizations like Tatanka are so important. They're not just developing technology. They're building bridges between cultures, connecting people with ideas and solutions that can benefit us all. 
It's like they're creating a global network of innovation where everyone has something to contribute. And that brings us back to the core message of this deep dive. Sustainability is a collective effort. It's not just up to governments or big organizations. We all have a role to play. Right. So as we wrap up, what's the one thing you want our listeners to take away from this conversation? I'd say it's this. Be curious, stay engaged, and don't be afraid to challenge your assumptions. Because sometimes the most unexpected places hold the most valuable lessons. Exactly. Who would have thought we'd find so much inspiration for global sustainability in the heart of the Himalayas? It's been an incredible journey. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Tibet's unexpected role in sustainability and the amazing work being done by Tatanka. It's been a pleasure. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making those connections that can lead to a brighter, more sustainable future for all.